So continuing on my series of talking about how products came to be, I wanna talk about how the Apple Watch Ultra and its chonky, magnificent gloriousness came to be. And to do that, we gotta dive into some early Apple Watches. Now, if you do want a deep dive on some of these units, please let me know, but we're not here to talk about them or what they run today, but about how from something as simple as this, we evolved to the Apple Watch Ultra. So let's start off with the two earliest units I have here. These are both proto revisions, the earliest, of the first generation Apple Watch. As you can see, there's a lot of differences. However, we're here to talk most about the materials. And they both have their pluses and their downsides. Aluminum is a far cheaper material than stainless. However, you do lack durability. As you can see, Apple clearly has done some kind of impact testing on the watch given the overall curvature of what would likely have been a side impact quite fiercely. So much so to the point it actually cracked the aluminum. I didn't know you could crack aluminum, but it's possible. If you look around on the front, you can see an indent from again, likely more impact testing. It shows that aluminum is resilient, however, it doesn't take too well to damage. If we jump over to the stainless one, you can see a similar impact, however, it doesn't have nearly as much of a dent, and on top of that, there's no crack. The watch is overall a lot more durable in its design and still subject to deformation by impact, but better. Continuing down the line, we have an EVT watch. The black stainless is a lot better of a material as it has a special PVD-like coating from Apple. This was likely done to help with scratch resistance as if we look at both watches, you can see that this watch is super scuffed making the QR code and asset tag almost illegible on the side, whereas this one, it's still very legible and overall looks in a lot better condition. It also has been impact tested and has a similar dent along the side, but again, the buttons still click, the crown sorta of still rotates, and it's still functional after an extreme impact. Now, these are two very strong and durable watches. However, they did try with ceramic. When fused and casted properly, like in this watch housing, is very durable. However, when it does break, it breaks poorly. I don't have it with me today, but I do have a prototype of one of these watches that is severely damaged from some extensive testing. Ceramic, when it breaks, it becomes almost brittle and it'll crack, opposed to dent inwards like this. Maybe a story for another day, but ceramic was never released on the Series Zero, unlike this housing is four. Instead, it was held to the Series Two. Ceramic, however, stayed the most durable design up until the Series 5. After that, they discontinued the watch. This was likely due to the high cost of manufacturing fusing ceramic. With the Series 6, they introduced the titanium watch. With titanium being an incredibly durable fused material with properties between stainless and aluminum. Aluminum watches can't pick up scratches. This is true of the titanium ones. It's a raw anodized-like material that you cannot scratch. It's why titanium's used in certain vehicle chassis and in aerospace applications. Stainless, on the other hand, has a lot of rigidity. Titanium retains the benefits of those rigidities without the downside of being able to be scratched. It's why on the Ultra, it's perfect for a highly durable design. However, they also learned from their ceramic root. And when it's cast and formed, it can be made into a lot of different shapes. It's why it can be seen in plates, vases, and mugs. You can make almost anything out of ceramic if you have the casting for it. This is further shown in the fact that the last couple years of Apple Watches have continued to use ceramic back, including this Apple Watch Ultra. Apple learned to redo how they do waterproofing on these watches. Previously, with designs like these, the screens were set within a bezel and adhered down. The only real entry point would have been this hardware diagnostic port. It has six pins and is how the watches would be flashed with firmware and tested in the factory. However, with the Series 7, they got rid of that port entirely, making there no physical entry points to the watch outside of the display and the speaker. This further helps the Ultra 
as the display is inset within this bezel guard-esque material, allowing it to be properly adhered down, the watch is completely waterproof, and that's why they can get away with the diving rating. It makes perfect sense. While people don't like the exclusion of a port, and hopefully it'll never come to iPhone, it makes sense on a watch. Additionally, the sapphire display makes even more sense. It's been included on the higher end stainless steel and ceramic Apple watches from day one. However, when Apple started with the first watch, it's not like they thought of sapphire out of nowhere. Sapphire crystals has been common on actual watches for decades. Due to its crystalline structure, it's almost impossible to crack and unable to be scratched by anything other than itself. They've taken a lot of inspiration from actual watch making. People like to make the comparison to the Patek Philippe Nautilus with this crown guard, which is likely somewhat true as it was Johnny Ives' favorite watch, and this does look quite similar. However, the concept of a crown guard is nothing new. We can take the watch I'm wearing today for an example. This is a very standard GMT watch, and it has a crown guard. This would be used to prevent bumps and bruises with the crown. Is on mechanical watches, the crown has a stem that goes inside the watch and meshes with the gear train so you can set and wind. If you were to break your crown off the watch, you can't set your watch, or before automatic watches, you couldn't even wind it. So it's crucial for mechanical watches, less so for a digital watch like this. However, if you're in extreme environments, equally as important to make sure you don't damage your digital crown. That's part of the reason why even on standard watches, the crown is inset into the case. Having a big piece exposed to the elements poses a threat to it being knocked off. If you have a jagged rock, it would be possible to catch and maybe even break off. And while you could still use the watch, you're not going to be able to get through any of the menus. It's this culmination of experience from watches like these and actual watchmaking insight that has allowed Apple to create a truly rugged tank of a watch. This watch is perfect for anyone in outdoor and extreme environments and with the combination of ceramic and titanium materials almost indestructible. I hope this was an interesting dive into the evolution of Apple Watch and likely how Apple concluded on this design and set of materials to create the Ultra. If you want more deep dives like this, let me know down below and stay tuned for more prototype content soon.